In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to detail at an apartment location, even if you don't have the generator, pressure washer, and everything else you need to get the job done. And I do wanna mention quickly that this Monday, October 2nd, we're finally launching the Proper Care products and merch. So we're gonna have an all-purpose cleaner, a glass cleaner, a plastic and rubber dressing, and a car soap in both 16 ounce and gallon sizes for you to purchase. Aside, we're also gonna have the, uh, the, the merch and the hats, well, one hat being launched. Again, this is October 2nd, Monday, so I'll be sharing it on Detail Groove, the Instagram, YouTube, the newsletter, so be on the lookout for that because this is a long time coming and I'm super excited to finally be able to release this to the public. So let's go ahead and get started with this episode. Welcome back to the Detailing Business Class Podcast, where you'll learn proven tactics and strategies on sales, marketing, and operations to grow your business. I'm your host, Oscar Gill, and my goal is to elevate you as a detailer and business owner to the next level. Welcome back to another episode. Glad to have you here. Today, we're talking about how to detail at an apartment or at a location that isn't a house or home and still get the job done. So I've been a mobile detailer for 10 plus years now, and I have had my fair share of times of going to a non-house location, whether it's a work location, whether it's a uh, an apartment, whether it's a town home, sometimes those, those kind of fit into like, it's a weird situation. Um, and sometimes you have to get a little, uh, you know, you have to finesse the system a little bit to make it work because some areas just, they're going to be a bit trickier than others. And at the time that I was doing that, I didn't have a pressure washer or water tank, um, or things that I had a generator at times, but there are also times where I didn't have a generator and I really had to like figure out how to work on site. So, um, you know, ideally you'd want to have a generator, water tank, pressure washer, right? That's like the most ideal situation if you want to be a mobile detailer. And I mean, man, nowadays I see a bunch of builds in like Honda Civics, in Mustangs, in Jeep Wranglers that like have a full setup um, in such small compact units, which is awesome. Um, But yeah, nonetheless, like ideally you want that, but I'm just, whether you're starting off, whether you don't have the space, whether, whatever the reason you might not have it. So, um, so let's go ahead and get started here. I have my notes. So I'll just be referencing these. Um, So, Take the information uh, that I say here and mold it to fit what you have. Again, like you might have a generator, but no water tank, or you have the pressure washer and the whatever, but just whatever I say here, make it fit your your situation. Okay, so here's what I did, okay? Here's what I did when I was by myself in my HHR. So I would take a bucket uh, of uh, a five-gallon bucket filled with water, and I would take a five-gallon container of water filled with water um so when i say the the bucket of water like you know just your regular bucket of water right whether that's going to be used for your rinse list or whatever like i'd have a bucket filled with with uh five gallons of water now i wouldn't do the wheel bucket i i've I've never been a fan of having the wheel bucket wheel bucket filled with water i just i I don't do that so i'd have one uh wash bucket of water or just a bucket of water and then a five gallon container like a jug um not the one that you dispense water like that you drink out of, but it's like a um, like a, like a traveling jug. Um, you can find it on Amazon on REI. It's, they're like seventy bucks. But I would so I'd be able to have ten gallons of water with me when I'd go to a mobile job. So whether I'm doing a rinse list, whether I'm using you know a soap solution, whether um, I need them to like refill the the pump sprayers, the spray bottles, or um, in whatever capacity, like I had ten gallons of water to work with, and most of time, most of the time, that would get me by. Um, but that's the way I would carry my water. Now, for uh, pressure washer wise, you actually have a few options now. Like ten years ago, there wasn't at there there wasn't as anywhere near as um, as many battery powered options as there are now. Um, back then, like you know. As far as pressure washers, the only one that I could remember, not 10 years ago, maybe like seven years ago, uh, five years ago, it was the Works pressure washer or the the Sunjoy, Sunjoy, the, what's that guy's name? The, yeah, Sun, I think it's called Sunjoy. I forget the name. Or is that the drink from Chick-fil-A? I don't know, but it, it, it was a, it was a, um, a battery-powered pressure washer. And these battery-powered pressure washers are not strong relative to, like, an actual electric or, or gas-powered pressure washer. Like, the PSI is not there. Um, if they have a water reservoir, like, it's maybe, like, a gallon or two. 
But the ones that you can like, that is a perfect option in 2023 and moving forward if you don't want to rely on a generator or on the customer's power. Like you can buy, um, there's just so many more on the market now, but you can buy a battery powered pressure washer. And the thing with this is that like, it's giving you enough pressure to rinse the vehicle down. Like that's the main thing. Like it's not going to be super sudsy if you're going to connect, if you're going to use the foam cannon, um, you know, you're not going to like, it's not going to be a traditional, even a, 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 a 1700, um, uh, the 1700 Karcher, uh, pressure washer that, that's 150 bucks. Like that one will still outbeat any battery powered pressure washer. That being said, you don't have to rely on a generator. And that's the big part. So back then I, I would have the works battery powered pressure washer and I would use the bucket of water as my water source and it would just siphon it up and I would rinse the vehicle like that. Again, the pressure was super weak. Granted, this was like six years ago or so. So like things have definitely evolved and I haven't really kept track of like all the, the, um, the pressure washer, the battery powered pressure washers that are, that are out there. Um, but th that is definitely something you can look into. Now, the problem with anything battery powered is one, they're pricey. And then two, the battery. Um, so like if you're going to do multiple washes in one day and you're trying to rely on a battery powered, either one, carry a bunch of batteries or two, like you have to conserve how much water or, or power you're using from the, from the tools that we can actually make them last. So pros and cons to everything. But there, there are definitely workarounds. And, and, and honestly, like, you can do a lot of mobile detailing with battery-powered machines, right? Because now you have the polishers, there's pressure washers, there's the, uh, the drills, there's um, the vacuums. Like, there's a lot of battery-powered uh, options out there now. Again, biggest thing that I see is one, lack of power, lack of consistency. As far as, like, you know, when you first start the machine on a full battery, you're going to have the most power. And then as your battery dies, it just you're going to lose more and more. Um, so that's a big loss. And then three, if you want to make sure you have enough power for the day or for whatever, like you need to carry more batteries. So like in our mobile van, um, the, the, we are, our drills are the DeWalt, um, brand. So, and there's two dr uh, drills in there because there's, there's two of them that go mobile. So I think in our van alone, like just in our van alone, I think we carry about six battery packs. Um, some of them are the upgraded ones that last longer. Some are just the, like the, the stock ones that they came with. But we do carry six of them. And that means you have to make sure that all six are always charged because you don't want to go out there thinking one is charged and like you switch it out and then that one is dead. And then you're on one more battery and like that's just not good. So like you have to be on top of charging them and making sure that they are charged. So that way when you go out to the field, you don't run into problems. Um, yeah, so third one is again, uh, the vacuum. So you can use a battery powered vacuum. We have, uh, a DeWalt battery powered vacuum. There's multiple brands out there. So I'm not saying this is the best, this is, this is just the one that we have. Um, and we've used it sometimes to do heavy vacuuming, but for the most part, we use it as a, uh, final vac, final vac, meaning like before we turn in the, the, the vehicle to the customer, because we had the doors open, because the wind is blowing, because we're maybe under a tree, like debris falls in there, leaves fall back in there, some dust might fall back in there. So we'll literally just turn on the vacuum and vacuum up the light stuff. But in the context of like, could you use that as your primary vacuum? Yes. Is it going to take longer? Yes. Like, is it as strong? No. But like, is that a workaround to like having something very compact? Yes. Because that, that, that cordless vacuum does not take up a lot of space right? Like you can easily put it like in a small little section and not take up a lot of space to where you can still work around and do a lot of things. Um, so that's something I definitely recommend, uh, um, using a, a battery powered vacuum. Um, next here is, and a lot of people don't like this because they want to be able to like do the, the thing that they want to do. Um, but that's going to be using a rinseless wash instead of your traditional wash method, right? Traditional wash method might be either foaming it down or a two bucket wash method, or you just in some capacity want to see a bunch of suds and stuff. I would just go with a rinseless. And for me, when I was a mobile detailer um, back in the day uh, by myself, I would do a rinseless wash. And in a lot of scenarios, like it wasn't the most ideal because like, yes, like it would help if I foamed it down or it would help if I had more pressure um, to, to rinse it down. But in where I was and what I was doing and the services that I was doing, the rinse list worked fine. So if you haven't used rinse list, like I highly encourage you to use it. Like I've been doing rinse list now for over what, six years, seven years. It works. 
again, there, there's 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 context to everything, right? So, um, you know, if 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 there if it's a, a vehicle that I'm working on that's corrected and coded and swirl free, and the vehicle is very dirty, would I go with a rinse is wash option? No, right? It's all context. Um, so it's use it where it makes sense. But going with a with a rinse wash, uh, rinse wash does work. Now, uh, back in the day uh, when I was by myself, um, and that I have a pressure washer and such. I would first rinse the vehicle. I mean, do a rinseless wash on the vehicle. And then from there, I would have water left over in my rinse bucket, right? Like the, the, the vehicle's washed and dried, like it's done. Then I would use that same water, right? And I would clean the wheels and tires with that. Now, again, a lot of people won't like that. If, if, I, if I posted that on TikTok or Instagram, like people would probably like look down upon that. But that's because that, that's social media. Like in the real world application, like you can clean wheels like that with, you know, I would, I would put my wheel brushes in there and I would be able to clean all the wheels. Again, based on where you are with your business, what you have, what tools, what products, whatever, what, you know, your skill level is a service, like make that fit and work for your, your, your situation. All right. So next one here is each apartment is going to be different. Um, there are times where like, where we worked outside of the of the apartment and they're like hey if you're gonna detail you have to detail inside the parking um lots if you're outside or, or like if it's like in the front office it's not allowed um it had to be in the, in the in the actual like gated back spot um some areas are gonna have dedicated wash bays some areas are gonna have like very tight parking because like they're just it's just tight parking um like every apartment unit is going to be different so in that regard it does help to ask questions um, to your customer, they're probably not going to know if there's like a wash bay or something, but anyway, so, um, so let me break down some of the apartment units that you might run into. All right. So some apartment units might have a wash bay, right? And some of these are free. Like it's just, it's for the residents. Some you have to like pay quarters or they might have like, you know, it might be up to date and like you can pay with your card or something, but those will like give you a, a vacuum or a pressure washer that you can use. And if you have that situation, that's super ideal because I mean, you just need the pressure washer for the wash. And then after that, you can like move it out. Or if you need the vacuum, you can pay for the vacuum. So some apartment units do have that. Some might be older, some might be newer. So it really depends on, you know, where you are. But that can be a possibility. And that's something that I would ask the customer. Again, they might, you know, maybe they're on like the, the far left side of the parking lot and the wash bay is like on the far right side. And, and then it, they've never been to the far right side of the apartment. So they don't know it's there. Um, so that might happen as well, but you know, you could always just ask and say, Hey, um, do you have like a dedicated wash bay over there? Just, just, um, just to kind of plan once I'm there, that's a simple question you can ask. Um, number two is, uh, some apartment units have electrical outlets around their apartment. And this one, I I've seen it multiple times. The problem with this one is that a lot of times they weren't working. Um, like there was another, there was an apartment that I went to that they had outlets all across the parking lot. Um, yeah, the parking lot, like on the curb, um, there was like outlets every, everywhere. And I was like, Oh, this is so like, this is the best apartment ever. Like there's so many units. Like I, I you know, I walked to there, I, I plug it in, I walk back, I, I plug it into my machine and I turn the machine on no power. I was like, Oh, okay, well maybe it's just this one. There's another one on the other side over there. So I get it, I walk over there, plug it in, turn on the machine no power. And I was like, Oh, you're kidding me. Like all these uh, outlets, like, and then there's nothing there. Um, so, so that might happen, but you can, if you're parking near the actual apartment, like the actual units, um, a lot of times they'll have them on the, like obviously on the exterior of the walls or in the hallways. And if you're close enough, like you can run your electrical cord. That's what I did. Um, you can run your electrical cord into the hallway and then just run it to the car. If you're working like right in front of their apartment like if it's on the first floor and you are basically like right outside their apartment unit um you can hook up to their outlet outside or inside like that's that's i've done that too like way many years ago like i, I hooked up right like i was detailing right outside their apartment and i said hey can i just hook up to your to your patio outlet right there and, and they're fine with it um so that one that like that one a lot of times there's options to do it it's just can you find it or can you figure it out to make it work in your favor, right? Like you might have to, to move the vehicle a little bit um, to, 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 to actually reach the outlet. And that might put you like in an unfavorable position. But that one, I said, like, if you look around, if you kind of, you know, you can, you can make that one work. Um, so another thing, another thing that I just, as, as a tip for apartment, for detailing at apartments is like try to work in an area with enough space because it, 
a problem that you always get at, at apartment units is when you're parked side by side to other vehicles to where you can't open the door, you can't move your tools around, you can't, you know, it, it, you know, it, you can't park your car or your van next to the car you're working on. Like that makes it very cumbersome. So, you know, for us, we always, we always get the customer's vehicle and then we try to look for the most open area that we can. That way we can park the, the van sideways. We're not getting in anyone's way. If we can, we try to park far enough to where the generator won't make any noise. Um, so apartments are those things where like, if you have a full setup and the apart in the, and the parking lot is pretty big and you can like park far away from everyone, like it's pretty chill because no one is there to like walk by you or distract you and you're not in anyone's way and there's no cars passing by you. And it's like very simple and straightforward to work with. But on the opposite side, like if there, if it's a very small parking lot, you have to park your car, like maybe three cars away. You have to walk back and forth and like it, it's, it's dirt gravel basically like those are very 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 annoying to work with so depending what apartments where you are what service like some might be very very favorable others might not be so good and it'll just make the detailing experience not that great but that's kind of you know that's mobile detailing right because even if we're at a home location there's plenty of home locations where the driveway was very narrow where the driveway was all cracking and uneven and the grass on the side is dirt and, and like muddy and like, you know, cars are driving by the street and there's a bunch of neighbors walking by and like there, you all, you'll, you'll equally find good and bad scenarios, whether you're mobile at a home location or whether you're mobile at an apartment location, like it's going to happen either way. If you want to avoid all that, the next option is working at like your home garage or a shop. But of course, that's like a completely different topic at that point. But yes, can you detail at an apartment? Absolutely. Do many detailers do it? Absolutely. Like I have done a one-step polish at an apartment unit. Like it's doable. Another big thing you might have to have to um, content with is the property management themselves. We've never, I don't think we've ever been I think once we had like a property manager or someone like come talk to us like, hey, like who's, whose vehicle is this? And uh, when, when, and here's a side note. If someone, any, if anyone ever asks about whose car you're working on, don't give out the information, right? It's no one's business to see who the customer is, right? So like when, when, when they uh, approached us, we said like, oh, this is like a, a, cust a customer uh, hired us to come clean their vehicle. And they're like, well, what, uh, what customer is it? I mean, what? Well, yeah, who's the person? And we're like, at, at that, I don't know. I would just contact it to come and, and, and clean this vehicle. Because again, like you don't know who you're actually talking to. They might say they're a property manager or they might say they're a neighbor or they might say they're uh whatever and they're actually not, you know? So that that's just like a privacy, like be safe. Don't give anyone's information out because that's also not good. Um, But yeah, so, so on that one, that's only ever happened once. Where that might happen more is like condos to... If you're working like in a garage, they might have like a designated area for you to work. Or if you're working at a like office building, sometimes they have like their own dedicated like car wash people that they contact and they don't want other people working there other, aside from the people, the, the, the detailers or car wash people that they contracted. So we had instances where like security comes up to us and they're like, hey, like, um, you know, what are you guys doing here? And we tell them and like, hey, like, can you at least go like um, behind the building somewhere? Um, there's been times where like we're so far in the detail. We're like, hey, we have like an hour left. Can we just finish up and then we'll be done? And they're like, yeah, sure. Um, so condos um, or office buildings have their own set of, of, of problems. But it, it, it's going to be just as applicable of, of what I said about apartment detailing with these options, like when we work at office buildings, I think that, well, we can't do it anymore because our van is too tall and it doesn't go through the garages anymore. But we were, when we were in a smaller van and we were working at condos or office buildings downtown, um, we, we would always take the vehicle to the highest floor. And typically when we do that, like there's no cars there. It's super open. Um, usually you get a good view if you're working like in the city or something like you get to see it, you know, you're working kind of like in the city on the, on the rooftop and that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so yeah, like every little location might be slightly different. Um, if you're working like at a condo or a high rise or, um, something like that, or, or, or like a very nice office building, we always ask the customer, Hey, do we have permission to be there? Right. Just, just because like they might 
need approval from security from property management. So we'll just ask the question. Um, it, it usually doesn't stop us. Like we'll still go, but we just want to ask them that way. Like we have our own proof of like, well, we asked the customer and they said it was okay. So, or, or like, Hey, oh, we, we asked the customer and the customer got um, confirmation that from property management that we're allowed to be here. Um, so, something like, but it's never, it's never really like stopped us from working. Um, we have another customer that we take his vehicles from the condo and we just drive it to the target open parking lot. That's right there. And because the target parking lot is so big and we work at the very edge of the parking lot, like we've never been told anything, but you know, could, could there be a day that like security or something like comes, tells us something possibly. Yeah. But, um, again, like every single location you're at might be a little different. Um, the, the most ideal obviously is going to be a home location because it's a customer's home and they control everything. Um, but aside from that, like every other place will have like its own little nuance, but I, I will say like 90% of the mobile jobs go without a problem. Like we get there, the customer's there, we park the, the van right next to them. Um, the customer comes out, they, we talk, we, we let them know what we're going to do. We detail, we call the customer back out. They look, they pay, they're happy. We wrap up, no interruptions, no problems. And we're on our way. So that's 90% of the details. Um, but again, it's, it's just going to change based on like where you are and then like what, what's your setup looking like. But, uh, anyway, I'll end it right here again, October 2nd, this Monday, um, we'll be releasing the proper care products and the merch. Um, I think there's going to be one, two, three, four, five shirt options, three designs, three colors, but six options in total. There's going to be the D2 Groove hat. The proper care products is going to be the all-purpose cleaner in gallon size, the everyday car soap in 16 ounce and gallon size, the glass cleaner in 16 ounce and gallon size, and the plastic and rubber dressing in 16 ounce and gallon size. And that's what we're having on the first launch. It's this Monday, October 2nd. If you're interested, I'll be posting it on YouTube and my newsletter and um, the Instagram. So be on the lookout for that. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you guys on the next one.